When I was a little girl, one of our favorite family traditions was acting out the nativity right before Christmas. And I had four sisters. And so we each had to take turns acting out the part of Mary. And so that means we got a turn every five years. But she is a wonderful woman to emulate. And today I'd like to talk a little bit about um, some of the characteristics that Mary showed that I think we should follow and emulate in our own lives. And most of my story today is going to be taken from Luke chapter 1, and you can follow along with me there. And it says in verse 28, And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. So this angel comes and appears to Mary, and it says in the next verse that when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and um, wondering what in the world he was talking about. And sometimes we feel like that. We too feel troubled when we hit certain spots in our life. We feel uh, maybe something different is happening and something is changing in our lives and we feel troubled about it. I'm sure she did feel troubled about it. And so we know that we're not unique in that. Mary also felt a little troubled and wondered what's going on here. And her life was about to be changed. Um, okay, and then in verse 30, it says, And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and shall bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. And so... She has found favor with God, and she's called to be the mother of the Son of God. And um, I think the lesson to be learned here is that God took an ordinary peasant girl from the city of Nazareth and called her to do an extraordinary thing. And the same is true with us. God takes ordinary people every day, and he invites us to become extraordinary by doing extraordinary things. And sometimes there are things that we may not have wished on ourselves, but by doing them and going through that process, we become better. And um, anyway, so that's just a comparison for Mary. Let's go down to verse um, 34. After telling Mary about Jesus Christ, her son, she asks a question, and I think sometimes when we feel God calling us to do things, it's important to ask questions. So this is the question Mary asked. She said, then, the, then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And here Mary was simply asking a question, wondering how this is going to work, um, seeking clarification. Um, and I think that's a good thing to learn from this story is, is sometimes we can ask ask questions when we're not sure what we should be doing or we don't understand what we feel God is calling us to do. How, how do you want me to go about this, God? And often he will open doors if we approach him and ask him about that. Verse 36 is really neat because one of the things the angel tells her is that her cousin Elizabeth has also conceived in her old age. And of course, she is pregnant with John the Baptist. And she tells her this, and then he mentions in verse 37, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. And that is awesome. When, when we work with God, um, nothing is impossible to us. If he wants it to happen and he wants us to accomplish that, it will happen. But we have to work with him. And um, we can see that in Elizabeth's life. We can see that in Mary's life. And impossible things happened because I found that to be true in my own life that sometimes I feel God has given me tasks that are too hard to do or seem impossible at first and then little doors open here or I feel like God shines the light a little bit as I take a step into the darkness and and so things that I previously thought were impossible um, I find they aren't so impossible after all um in verse 38, Mary's wonderful response is, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And so she was willing to embark on this journey. Even though she couldn't understand and see the whole scope of it, 
she was willing. And I think Mary's faith is one of the most admirable things about her is that she had tremendous faith in God and she believed and was humble enough to submit to the will of the Lord from the very, very get-go. And that is to be admired and in her. And uh, that's one of the reasons we celebrate her and her faithfulness and to be the mother of the Son of God. Another thing that I love about this story is that I'm sure Mary felt very alone after the angel left. Sometimes after we have an impression that we should do something, we feel very alone afterwards and we wonder, did that really happen? Am I really supposed to do that? Maybe you second guess yourself, and I don't know if Mary did or not, but I find I do. Um, but the angel had given her the key of what she needed to do during that visit. He told her to go visit Elizabeth. And as she visited Elizabeth, Elizabeth also became a like a second witness to her. She had the witness of the angel. She had the, and then she had the witness of Elizabeth when she visited her. Um, just as she entered the house, uh, when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And so Elizabeth became a second witness that Mary was the mother of the Son of God. And I'm sure that helped her to feel not so alone. And those two women were able to support and be with each other um, at times when they probably needed it, each other. And they were both key components in the life and ministry of our Savior Jesus Christ. And I I love this story. There are, there are a few stories in the Bible that teach us of faithful women. And this is one of them where we get their names and we learn some of the important critical details about who made them, who they truly were. And so I think we can follow Mary. If we feel troubled, continue trusting in the Lord. We also learned the second lesson that God calls ordinary men and women to do extraordinary things and that it's okay to talk to God and ask questions if we're unsure of what path we're supposed to be on or how we're supposed to go about something, to ask those questions, then submit to the Lord and, and have that faith that Mary had. And then if you feel alone, See if God sends you a second witness, and it may be through a friend or someone else, but God rarely leaves us alone. At this holiday season, I invite you to remember our Savior Jesus Christ and the miracle of his birth and the faith of the women and the men around him uh, that help teach him. And I add my witness to that of Mary and Elizabeth and the angel that Jesus is the Son of God. And I share that with you today and invite you to share with those who may need some inspiration at this holiday season. Have a wonderful day. Hope on.